I'm Starlene Stringer. You may recognize me as the host of Open Line, ICTN's long-running talk show. You may also know that the station has reached a huge milestone this year, and in recognition, we're launching a new show to replace Open Line. The show is called Irving In Depth, and as our premiere, we're celebrating ICTN's 40th anniversary. Kathy Whiteman joins me with details about the new program. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear Kathy fill us in, tell us everything about this new program. Well, First of all, let me thank you, Starlene. I am excited to get an opportunity to talk about the new show. So excited that you're still going to be with us as the host of me it. Too, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called Irving in Depth, and it's really the evolution of what we started Open Line to be. When we began this show, the technology that was available was cable TV and a telephone. Well, that's no longer the case. We've got lots of different ways to deliver the information that we want to deliver. So we wanted to create a show that would adapt to that. And we wanted to change the format quite a bit. Um, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. But basically, it's going to cover interesting things that are happening in Irving that people want to know about in such a way that goes a little bit more in depth, forgive me, you know how much I love a pun, <laughs> but that, that's the purpose of the show, to go more in depth into the things that folks want to know about. Sure. And then uh, we'll follow that with a little bit of Q&A, maybe with a subject matter expert. Well, I'm glad you said follow, because it <laughs> makes you think about social media and people following this show, which we hope you do. But why is the social media aspect so important, and, and how so? How is it going to be used with Irving In Depth? Well, that's one of the most important aspects of the show. We're going to make sure that we deliver the show any way people want to see it, but we also want them to interact with us. So we'll be announcing the subject of the show that's coming up next so that people can find that out watching the show. They can see it on social media, and if they have questions, if they have comments they want to make about the thing that's coming up, we want them to do that. And as a part of the show, we'll read some of their comments or answer their questions in the final part of the show. Now in today's show we're looking back at ICTN's history which is the foundation for what we are 40 years later. I have to ask Kathy who did you talk to for information about the early years? Okay so you've heard the term OG right? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right we don't have an OG. Okay I was like woo clear yeah. that up. <laughs> <laughs> we don't but we do have an OLT our original leadership team. Okay. So we talked with Patty Landers Pat Nix and Paul Wallstrom, the folks that really built the foundation of ICTN from the ground up, literally, mm. and who remained in place for over 25 years, wow. which I think is part of the reason that ICTN has had such consistency over the year, over the years, and also a real, um, a real dedication to excellence. We have tried to provide the information that people want to see in a way that lets them know, okay, we are here, we've got the information, we're going to do this the absolute best way that we can. We want you to watch and we want you to stay with us. They must be so proud. Can't wait to see. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so <laughs> let's roll that beautiful ICTN footage. <laughs> I think we were one of the first cities to really focus on uh, local programming. Okay. I'm Patty Landers Caperton and glad to be here. My original title was Cable Services Manager. I was the administrative person. I'm Pat Nix and I hate being on camera. The anticipation was very high and I felt it when I got here. <laughs> and it was a matter of saying, don't blow this. <laughs> this is Paul Wallstrom. I am here on <laughs> <laughs> population was a lot smaller. When I first got here, it, I think what we were, what, 150,000 maybe, 125, something like that. The city really didn't go past um, Walnut Hill Lane to the north. Dart was coming in, the Cowboys were here. We had Texas Stadium. Valley Ranch wasn't developed yet. New uh, Fortune 500 companies were moving into Irving. Las Colinas was getting started and just going bananas. Irving had a lot going on and it was growing and it was growing from a a suburb to a city. Well, I don't think we get very much coverage and it seems like what we do get usually isn't very good. For a city of size, I don't think it's really got what it should get. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to see it get more. I never hear any news on the Dallas stations about Irving. Irving was getting ignored in the Dallas media. The city at that time had no written communications. There was not a public information officer. There was no newsletter. Cable was uh, 
really uh, in the something that was in the northeast part of the country for the most part. And then cable was just coming into it. Well, the companies started coming this direction and they approached our city about a franchise. Mayor Raper was very important with that. He, he, he'd seen, he'd gone to some different uh, stations and he, he was very, pretty much emphatic that we're doing programming. What was made clear to us was that um, our city leaders wanted our own TV station that would provide better communications to our citizens. It was pretty obvious that there was a big need, uh, even when we went out and started interviewing people. I would love to see some sports and stuff, especially with children in mind. Probably more the arts, maybe functions. Uh, I know Irving has a symphony. I think the covering some of the local games. One of the first things you did, and I can't remember why you were there, but you were on top of a building at UD. The story is, is when, I, when I came in July, um, <laughs> I was told that in August we were going to have a trade fair. And so we set out to do a video that we were going to show at the uh, trade fair about what <laughs> IC10 was going to be about. Yeah. And the first thing we did was went out and interviewed people. So what do you what do you, what do you want? Uh, the political aspects that are happening in the council. We could uh, tell them about our parks. See good media coverage because I think that's about the best program you can have is seeing what's going around in your neighborhood and you know in, in town. But we got a lot of great ideas that day, and we did a, your stand up, which is what we're talking <laughs> about, to kind of tie it all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best angle that I could find for a shot of <laughs> Texas Stadium behind you was on a roof at the <laughs> University of Dallas in July. In July. <laughs> 40 years ago. This is a unique and exciting plan. So here we are. Now what are we going to do? I don't know what your footwear was, but oh, I, it, it was, was, in, it was, oh, yeah. it was inappropriate. Well, completely. <laughs> That's what you wore back then. You dressed yeah. up more and Kathy had on, I want to say, a couple of inch heels, oh, yeah. two inch heels. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. in my 20s. I could wear them then. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and I remember thinking, am I getting shorter? Because my, yeah, my yeah, heels yeah, yeah. sunk into the tar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the wind was blowing. <laughs> and, and But it's, 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 it, was, it was great. It tied the whole thing together. And we, we did all that. We didn't have any way of editing it. We finally got an editor right before the trade show and put it all together. And, and, and that really, you know, going back and look at that, that really kind of defined what IC10 was going to be. We had 10 channels. <laughs> yes. 10 channels for, for Irving. Irving. 10 channels, yes. 10 channels for Irving. Uh, I, I said, that may be a bit much. <laughs> so I remember trying to find out from the cable company when they were actually going to have some homes hooked up. And uh, it, 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 we got maybe a day's notice on it. So, well, I said, I, I don't want to start running programming if there's nobody on the cable. And, and they finally said, uh, OK, we've got some people hooked up. And I think there's maybe 20 people that had cable at that time. We weren't sure when we were going to go on the air, but we knew the, we finally, that Monday that we went on the air was the Saturday was the, the election returns. And to do it live, from City Hall, it was in a, an Apollo moment where we, you don't know if it's going to work or not, and, and heads are going to roll if it doesn't, but it came off. Our, our only problem is that we set up next to a, a door that, uh, and it was a very windy night, and uh, they later built a, um, a, uh, another door on the outside of it because it, it got a lot of wind there, and we had Sharon Barbosa and Heather Brown sitting right by the door, and uh, when they announced, they finally announced uh, at the podium what the ele election returns were and that it had passed. The whole place went crazy. And someone opened up the door, it was coming in, opened up the door, and all, all the people are screaming, yelling. Heather's trying to talk in, and this gust of wind comes in and it just blows them all over the place. And uh, we learned the lesson not to put the, 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 the talent by the door anymore. That was our first week on the air. We hit the ground running, or we fell on the ground running. <laughs>
Only nine weeks old, and it can not only walk, it can run. Irving Community Television is just wrapping up its ninth week on the air. The folks there figured it was high time to show off the operation to Irving City Department heads. The city's cable operation already provides six hours of Irving-produced programs every week, in addition to live coverage of city council and school board meetings. And apparently the effort is paying off. 976 homes in Irving are wired for cable. That's roughly 70% of the homes that are eligible for cable right now. And that's one of the highest percentages for cable in the Metroplex. Still ahead, sports news. I think we had a plan and we followed the plan, but we were flexible. And I think uh, the right team was on board. We were doing reporting on things that weren't being reported anyplace else. Everybody worked hard, but mm -hmm. then we were recognized for it on a national level, mm -hmm. and that was very exciting. And, and, and I can remember when National Cable Television Association met here, and at that time they had the, the uh, Cable Ace Awards, mm -hmm. and that one night, besides overall programming, we won four other, think for our sports and many mm -hmm. things, we won these wonderful awards. The thing that really stands out to me was, uh, I guess it's the Regional Katy Awards, we had uh, covered the, uh, a uh, tennis championship with Andre Agassi mm -hmm. at the sports club. Mm -hmm. And so it was a finalist for a Katie Award. And that night we were up against Dale Hansen's mm -hmm. sports special, Scott Murray on Channel 5, and a couple of others. And we won that award. Yeah. And it was, it, it was just a really significant moment because it showed that we really did have a professional staff who did an outstanding job. I give a lot of credit to you, Paul. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. so, yeah, yeah it was. but that, yeah, was, <laughs> that was just a night that really stood out. And then, then they weren't local anymore. You couldn't, uh, they didn't let local Well, they, they changed the rules. <laughs> yeah, right, after we, right after we beat the yeah, affiliates yeah. out. <laughs> they changed the rules the next year and we won the next year again. <laughs> yeah. Pat and I have talked about this, that it's the, the city's institutional history. Nobody can recreate it and, and show it in the way that we can. Well, it's in our name. It's community. I, th I think we've built a community. You want to know what happened in 1982? Call ICTN. <laughs> well, that's a look at the origins of ICTN and how it developed over the years. And for anyone who didn't already know it, Kathy started at the station when she was 10 years old. <laughs> Kathy is back and joining us is City Source producer and anchor Thomas Gandy. Thomas, let's get a little of the history with the station you have. Like, when did you first come to ICTN? I started as a freelancer in 2001. In fact, I'll never forget the date because it was 9-11-2001. So we just marked the 20th anniversary of that. And I was working another job in traditional broadcast news and was able to channel that experience in ICTN. And then later, about 13 years ago, I became a full-time employee. Oh my goodness, I never looked back because it's so amazing, right? You've been busy. Busy times, definitely. The city keeps you busy. You know, people tell me, and I'm sure they tell you, Kathy, how do you find so much to cover just in the city of Irving? I'm like, oh my gosh, there is no limit to what there is to cover. Absolutely. There's a whole lot going on. And you know, Kathy, in the feature, Patty mentioned that many of ICTN's interns later joined the staff when full-time positions became available. So how many of ICTN's current staff started as interns? Okay, so let me think about that for a minute. I did. Okay. <laughs> and our newest employee, <laughs> Randy <too>. Contreras, did. <laughs> uh, Todd Everhart, who is now now an editor director and Stefan Sylvie who is now an editor director so there's 11 of us almost half Wow yeah half the staff that's yeah. impressive so Thomas what have been the biggest changes that you've seen over the years one is in the subject matter that we cover initially when I started as a freelancer and even in some of my full-time days we would cover any news happening in the city of Irving that would include crime that would include gas prices, phone prices, anything happening in the city of Irving. Uh -huh. In later years, we started to focus more on city initiatives, city successes, and that's been interesting too because there is a lot to talk about. Absolutely, and it's one of the things, uh, as you saw in the package, that Patty Landers, Pat Nix, and Paul Wallstrom all talked about is 
ICTN's evolution and the things that are going on in the city now are the things that people want to know about and thankfully we have Thomas to cover all of that business <laughs> and do it so well. And you too. And the other big change of course is in technology and we've done our best to adapt. I mean 20 years ago, 40 years ago certainly there was no mention of YouTube, social media. Now we're everywhere. We're trying to get to people where they are, where they can access our video. Yeah. Exactly. Whenever they want to, right? On exactly. demand. So mm -hmm. Kathy, I've got to ask, you've been here so long, what's been your favorite story and why? <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I could give you about five per decade. <laughs> so that would give us 20 and we don't have time for that. Um, I have loved covering the way Irving has grown. When we started here, as Patty mentioned in the, in the story, we didn't have computers. Mm. <laughs> there are a lot of changes in technology, as Thomas mentioned. I think probably one of my favorites over the years has been stuff that the Irving Heritage Society has done to sort of preserve the history. Um, I've also loved the various celebrities that have come through town that we've uh, had an opportunity to talk with who are impressed with what we've got going on here in Irving. And that's kind of nice. Well, I'm not going to say name drop. Okay, yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like what celebrities? <laughs> we want to know now. Acquiring minds want to know. What celebrities? Uh, well, it, as Thomas uh, included in a video that he produced recently, Oprah actually shot an edition of her show when it was still on the air in the Irving Arts Center awesome. back in 1990. So that was kind of a real big name. Uh -huh. But over the years, there's been John Travolta, Dennis Quaid, Salma Hayek, Hugh Grant. I mean, just so many people, um, you know, and we've talked about them and had a good time doing it. And she forgot one. Mm -hmm. One of her first assignments uh -huh. was covering Ronald Reagan visiting Irving. No way. One Seriously. of her first days. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. My, my daughter came home and her name is Reagan and she said, Mommy, I, it's a long story, but she said, Mommy, she goes, thank you for naming me after uh, an actor because I knew that I was going to be an actress one day because of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh my goodness, and you got to interview him. She's always been a fan of yours. She'll be an even greater fan once I told her you knew Ronald Reagan yourself. I am glad to say that I was there for it. I was terrified. I had no idea what I was doing, but Sam Donaldson was also on the days. Wow, now that gets me excited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just watched what he did and I thought, okay, I can adapt that for Irving and I'm going to say this. And and I just did. It worked. <laughs> you did a great job. You know, talking about all these stories, I've got to ask Thomas the same question. You've done a lot of interviews and met a lot of awesome people. What's been your favorite story? Well, there are so many, and I think the easy answer is looking at the Byron Nelson and the Texas Stadium implosion, and of course, those were all big days and fun events. But what really gets my creative juices flowing are really just the day-to-day -day stories when people let their guard down and let us in to really get to know them. And usually that's through a creative pursuit. Even though I'm the hard news person, I do a lot of stuff with creative people. Um, thinking of some dance stories. We did hip hop dancers a couple <laughs> years ago. That was a great story. And anything like that where people just let us in to get to know them. That's mm -hmm. what is really fun when we get to tell those stories. And of course, if I can add one other thing, I mean, you can't forget, it's when we talk about history, everything has changed with COVID, right? When you yeah, look at yeah the service we were able to provide through that pandemic to let people know what is happening in their city is really something special that I think we were able to accomplish. Yeah, and it was it was uh, very interesting for us because as we found these things out, we needed to turn them pretty quickly, which is not our usual thing. Mm -hmm. But we were there with the information and I was, I felt very proud of us at that point because I'm people sure. did need to know all of these things. We all needed to know it and it was right. good to be able to provide that information. I have to throw one in, one of my favorite stories that Thomas ever what did. Is <laughs> When when we found out that Texas Stadium was going away, when you found that Cowboys team oh, yes. to come out, except that they weren't the real Cowboys, they were a Pee Wee League. How they old were. were those boys? <laughs> they were probably 12 or 13 years old, but we let them play the final game at the Texas Stadium. Oh, side. that is awesome. Y'all yeah. got to be a part of that. You know, we've been talking a lot about the history of ICTN, but Thomas, what do you see as the future of ICTN? What's next? Well, one thing, I want more people to discover us and see what we do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
We've been here for 40 years, and that's one of the neat things about having all of this 40th anniversary observance, is kind of letting people know we're here, letting people see what we do, that we're on YouTube, we're on cable, and we're gonna continue to evolve. We're gonna adapt to the new technologies, whether it's some of the set-top boxes that we all think of now, Roku and everything like that. We're gonna adapt, hopefully we'll be able to find more ways to reach more people across the city of Irving, because we're delivering important information, we believe, yeah. and telling some great stories about the people here. What would you like to add to that, Kathy? What's your vision for ICTN in the future? Well, I've, I've thought about that because I'm coming t toward the end of my career. And don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still coming to bug you. Oh, I mean, don't <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to see ICTN continue to build on the foundation that our original leadership team and the original staff started here. Um, we, our job was to provide the kind of information that the people in Irving wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And that means providing it in a way, as Thomas said, that they want to see it. So if there should suddenly become a way to project that into your home in a way that is exciting, I want us to be there. If, there, it's, if it means projecting it into the thing you're carrying in your hand, I want us to be there. I want ICTN, ICTN to continue to do the thing that we've done with such commitment and such passion for so many years, and that's bring Irving to the people who live and work here. You know, I think we all trust and believe that it will be that ICTN is going to continue to be a wonderful place into the future and that more people, as Thomas is hoping, will discover it. Thank you all for sharing your ICTN memories. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Welcome. And thank you for watching. Visit the ICTN page at cityofirving.org for a list of activities celebrating ICTN's 40th anniversary, including the exhibit at the Irving Archives and Museum. Please join us for the next edition of Irving In-Depth on the renovations at Heritage Park. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter and send us your questions or comments. I'm Starlene Stringer. We'll see you next time.